In today's video we're going to be talking about how telomere lengths might predispose you to COVID-19 infection. My name is Dr. Mikhail Rashek of Mero Genomics. Before we get started, I want to remind you that we do have another COVID Q&A event coming up. So please stay till the end of the video to find out how you can get free tickets to that. All right, so T-cell lymphopenia is a common feature of COVID-19. That's basically when you have a massive drop in available T-cells and it's a predisposing factor for severity of COVID-19 and this is especially condition that is uh, predisposes those who are elderly so the older the individual they're more likely to experience this T lymphopenia and temporary lymphopenia T cell lymphopenia is is not uncommon with viral infection infections but with SARS-CoV-2 it's a little bit different in that it's more severe uh, and uh, therefore in order to be able to properly counteract this destruction of t-cells and we made a video on how t-cells might be destroyed by SARS-CoV-2 infection so check it out in order to be able to counteract this you have to basically massively produce new t-cells and the possibility or the ability to be able to achieve that can be dependent on the telomere length of your immune cells. So first of all, what are telomeres? Telomeres are specialized structures that are genetic structures that are found at the end of your genetic information. Your genetic information is divided into chromosomes and the ends of chromosomes are capped by telomeres. It's a specialized genetic information, but what's interesting about telomeres is that they get shorter with time. And eventually, every time T cells divide, telomeres have the propensity to get shorter and shorter. And eventually, they can get so short that it marks the cell from end, from uh, marks the cell to be able unable to be able to divide anymore. So the moment you reach a certain shortness of your telomeres, it destines the cell from no longer being able to produce any more cells afterwards. So you can see that in the context of, of your immune cells, that can be very important, such as T-cells, because it can limit the capacity of expansion of T-cells. And that could potentially explain why some individuals might be more likely to experience lymphopenia and not be able to offset it with mounting proper clonal expansion of T-cells because their telomeres are already too short and that can happen because your length of your telomeres is partially heritable. There's other mitigating features but I will talk about that in a moment. What I wanted to talk first in this video is discuss a paper where the authors looked at the relationship between T length and aging and the capacity for the T cells to mount that clonal expansion where T cells are divided massively in order to basically fight the infection. And the authors looked, used the available data to show that indeed that's the case where at first in life your ability to expand expand T cells increases until you reach on average around age 20 and then you can maintain this maximum maximum expansion of your T cells for up to six decades of your life and then this capacity to expand your T cells drops massively and we're talking about in the next decade of your life it's in the order of magnitude where you lose 90% of your T cells from being able to participate in that in that clonal expansion and this correlates correlates with telomere length so it really fits the model and it suggests that potentially the severity of COVID and including even the possibility of dying from COVID 
might be correlated to your T length in your immune cells and that could also explain why even some younger people might be predisposed to severe outcomes because as I mentioned the T length can be heritable and it correlates even further we know that certain comorbidities comorbidities predispose you, you to the severity of COVID-19 those comorbidities such as cardiovascular diseases or obesity hypertension they also typically historically correlate with shortened telomeres as well so you can see everything fits the model pretty well and the authors even look at the data of certain individuals who who had their telomere lengths measured prior to COVID-19 and what was interesting is that data was available on their infection eventually once the pandemic started and indeed those who had shorter telomeres were more likely to experience COVID-19 so in this regard also the data fit very well the proposed model that your telomeres and their length could potentially influence your capacity to be able to fight with COVID. Now, can we do anything about the telomeres? And the answer is yes. While I mentioned there is a genetic component, as is often with our biological molecules, and basically with our biology, there's both genetic as well as environmental components. So your lifestyle choices can definitely influence the rate of your telomere shortening so you can your lifestyle can either increase or decrease the rate of your telomere shortening and that in essence would also mean your lifestyle choices could potentially influence the likelihood of how well you can mount that t-cell expansion clonal expansion needed to properly fight infection and prevent COVID-19 so what are we talking about in terms of positive lifestyle choices? So no, not smoking is one. There's definitely been observation that smoking could lead to shortening of telomeres, but other events as well. Diet is a big one. So obesity is very well correlated with increased rate of telomere shortening and the diet is very influential in that regard. So one of the publications we checked, the authors were indicating that diet that is rich in antioxidants is very positive in reducing the likelihood of experiencing shortened telomeres. And the reason why is because oxidative stress is one of the problems that helps to contribute to shortening of telomeres but also other elements of diet for example diet that's rich in fiber diet that's rich in soy protein as opposed to meat protein also diet rich in healthy fats that's another that's another positive component of diet all of these have been shown to one degree or another help prevent shortening of telomeres another one is exercise as well that's been well shown, so keeping lean, active, physique, act, uh, lifestyle as well. And um, even stress has been linked to helping increase the shortening of telomere. So reducing stress could be another way how you could prevent this. If you're wondering how stress contributes to this, it's because during stress you release certain hormones that will negate the positive effects of antioxidants they will just simply reduce the capacity of your antioxidants to be able to help you so this is how you can correlate those those events so the authors of this publication that discussed lifestyle choices and telomere length discussed that your lifestyle can be influential in helping your health your longevity and this is, could be linked to basically, if you ever wonder how these lifestyle choices correlate to improving your immune system, that's just simply one possible example, which could be basically by helping your cells 
immune cells live longer in and have the capacity to divide for longer period of time and therefore protect you against serious infections. All right, if you stay with me till now, I want you to know we have another COVID Q&A event coming up. If you want tickets to this, the first 10 people who subscribe to our newsletter will send you a free ticket. Alternatively, if you've already are a subscriber and you never had a chance to get a free ticket, just email us and we'll see what we can do, how many free tickets we'll have available. What else I can tell you is that those events, they're a lot of fun. We basically take the first top 10 questions, we answer that and then it's open mic. Lots of fun, basically it's a friendly community. We have another event coming up, this is for business owners that would be interested in bringing a proactive wellness package to their employees. In essence, we're talking about teaching employees how to lead a proactive lifestyle that takes care, takes care of your financial well-being, your mental health well-being, as well as physical well-being. So me and two other experts in these arenas, we got together to produce this. So if you're interested, again, link to that as well as to the news newsletter is in the description below. So check it out. And finally, I want to say a big thank you to everyone who has uh, been uh, generous enough to donate money to us through Super Thanks. Big, big thank you for that. And if you like this content, please give us a like, subscribe to the channel, share the video, leave a comment. And we look forward to the next installment of our series. Bye, everyone.